Not everyone can handle the truth, and the reason for that is sometimes the truth hurts. It hurts very badly, to the bone, if you will. And if you're somebody that gets hurt or offended easily by the truth, this may not be the video for you. Look, when it comes to the WWE today, the simple truth is the WWE superstars are not superstars at all, period. I mean, it's true. We all know it's true. No matter how much of a spin we try to put on it, no matter how much we try to be sunny side up about it, to try and justify our still watching the WWE, it doesn't change the fact that there's not a megastar on the entire roster. There is not one real deal superstar in the entire WWE. Let me get this straight. We've gone from Hulk Hogan Hulkamania, the doing the training, the saying the prayers, the eating the vitamins, to John Cena's, you can't see me, and the C Nation, who should know you do respect, ah, pfft. we've gone from Stone Cold Steve Austin, the baddest son of a bitch on the planet, Austin 316, opening up a can of whoop ass, to Daniel Bryan, and yes, 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 We've gone from the rock, laying the smacketh down, and talking about jabronis and eating pie and being the most electrified man of sports and entertainment to Randy Orton and the RKO. When your top guys are John Cena, Randy Orton, and Daniel Bryan, you've got problems. You've got big problems. Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's fucking raining. You cannot sit there and look at Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, three of the biggest icons in the history of the business, and tell me in any way, shape, or form that John Cena, Randy Orton, and or Daniel Bryan come anywhere close to sniffing their butt cheese, let alone measuring up in any way, shape, or form to their star powers and or their legacies. If you believe that, I say to you, bullshit. Think about that. You've gone from the Hogan era, where somebody like Hogan was the top guy, to even if you go to the Crockett territory, somebody like Flair or Dusty was the top guy, to the Attitude era, where Austin and The Rock were the top guys, and then in WCW, you had the freaking NWO, you had Sting, you had Goldberg, you still had Flair, to now in today's business, in the WWE, you could argue that Daniel Bryan is the top guy. For Christ's sakes, Daniel Bryan is the top guy. Is that sad? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, again, we've got to be honest with ourselves. John Cena, Randy Orton, and Daniel Bryan are the top guys in the WWE today. That's sad. That's terrible. If that doesn't show you just how glaringly obvious the lack of star power is in today's WWE, I don't know what the hell will. Let's take a look at these alleged top guys, these alleged superstars, and see how they measure up to other eras. Let's start off with John Cena. You know what John Cena would have been in the Hogan era? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That's exactly what the hell he would have been without the star power of a Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And he frankly would have been a bit player in the Attitude Era that might have gotten an occasional run in the upper mid card as Thugonomics John Cena. That's it. This is the guy that has been the standard bearer of the WWE for the past 10 years now. A guy that would have been Hacksaw in the Hogan Era and a bit player, maybe upper mid card guy in the Attitude Era. Look at Randy Orton. You want to know what the hell he would have been? He'd have been tag teaming with Tom Zank or Paul Roma in the Hogan Era. He'd have been on the undercard. No question in my mind about it. No personality. No charisma. Horrible mic skills. And he's been doing it for over a fucking decade now. And this is one of the top guys in the company. And he probably would have been the same damn thing in the Attitude Era. He might have found a nice niche fighting in the hardcore division. Who the fuck knows and who the fuck cares? This is another guy that's been pounded down your throats for the past decade. That you've been expected to accept that he's a top guy. Think about that for a second. Randy Orton is a top guy in the company. How pathetic is that? And then let's get to Daniel Bryan. You know what Daniel Bryan would have been in the Hogan era? He'd have been tag teaming with Coco Beware. 
Or he maybe would have gotten lucky and gotten a really quality tag team partner, and he would have had a nice run in a great tag team division of the WWF of the 1980s. But that's it. And if we go to the Attitude Era, he'd been freaking feuding with Takamichi Noku over the light heavyweight championship, and maybe would have had a nice little run with Crash Howley in the hardcore division. And that right now is what a lot of you like to say is the hottest guy in the company today. A guy that would compare to Taka Michinoku and Crash Holly, perhaps with more personality and charisma. You could also argue that based off of his run during the Attitude Area, carrying the scale out, weighing well in excess of 400 pounds, that Crash Holly had as much, if not more, star power than Daniel Bryan, who many of you believe to be the top guy in WWE today. So John Cena's Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Randy Orton is tag teaming with Paul Roma and or Tom Zink. And Daniel Bryan is feuding with Takamichi Noku and Crash Holly or tag teaming with Coco B. Freaking where? And these are the top guys in today's company. Not only is it glaringly obvious how lacking the star power is at the top, when you go below, when you look at the up and comers, it's even more glaring and obvious as well. Let's look at that next generation, the young wave of talent, the guys that are trying to break through that glass ceiling that on different levels, many of you want to see ascend to that top plateau in the WWE today. Some of those names include Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt and Dolph freaking Ziggler. Let's take a step back to, let's say, 1997, when Brett and Sean and Taker were the established top guys at a time where the WWE, frankly, wasn't doing that well, especially compared to WCW and the Monday Night Wars. At least at that time, on the undercard, the midcard, the guys that were making themselves into stars in 97, 98, the guys that were going to be that next generation were guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H. Mankind. Cain. Think about that. Today's next generation are guys like Roman Reigns and Dolph Ziggler. Not to mention Rollins and Ambrose and Wyatt. Back 97, 98. It was Stone Cold. It was The Rock. It was Triple H. It was Mankind. It was Cain. You look at this so-called next generation, frankly, what the fuck is there really to get excited about? There's not a megastar amongst them, if we're being completely and totally honest, especially when you compare them to megastars of the past. You want to sit there and say, well, Mankind and Kane weren't megastars. Bull fucking shit! I tell you what, let's see John Cena ever do a ratings number like Mankind did back in 98 and 99. Let's see John Cena draw Mankind type of money. And we haven't even gotten to Triple H level or an even a larger level of the rocker Stone Cold Steve Austin. And these guys were in the mid-card in 97 and 98, some of them, most of them, all of them. And now the next generation is guys like Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt and Dolph Ziggler. If that's not a damning of today's WWE and today's product and today's lack of star power, I don't know what the fuck is. Because frankly, the only guy who actually feels like a megastar, the only guy that comes close to being a real superstar, the only guy that would have been a top guy both in the Hogan era and in the Attitude era would have been Brock fucking Lesnar. And this is the part-timer that went off to do big things in the UFC and does this just to get a big payday every couple of months. That's your star power. That's your megastar. Is the guy that wrestles once every three fucking months. And that's it. And even that you'd have to question, because even if he's the biggest star, if he's your superstar, he's your megastar, what type of real impact has he had on the business of the WWE? Well, I'll tell you, it hasn't been a good one. So what happened? Where did everything go wrong? Why does the WWE lack these top mega superstars today? Well, there are a few reasons. First, the lack of size in the company has hurt the company's business. This is true. I know the hardcore fans don't want to hear this, but it is true. The much larger segment of the audience are the casual mainstream fans that you don't like, but this is a fact. 
And the real simple fact of the matter is they don't want to tune in to watch freaking ROH because if they did, they would watch freaking ROH. They don't want to see everybody look the same and fucking wrestle the same and be 5 foot 10, 200 pounds doing flips and kicks and no selling and false finishing their asses off. There is a direct correlation between the business and the talents getting smaller and the overall dollars drawn by the business getting smaller. This is not up for discussion. This is not up for debate. There is no way to spin this. It is true. But more so than just the lack of size, it's the lack of overall talent that has hurt the business of the WWE. I mean, let's really be honest here. Part of the reason for guys like Hogan and Austin and The Rock and Triple H and Mankind and Kane and Taker over the years, and you go even in the Hogan era to guys like Savage and Warrior and guys like Andre and DiBiase and even the mid-card guys like the Honky Tonk Band and Jake the Snake Roberts and Mr. Perfect. You know, they were different personalities. They were different characters. They were different shapes. They were different sizes. But God damn it, in their own ways, they all had talent and a tremendous amount of it for what the hell they did, no matter what anybody tries to say to take away from any of them. You look at these guys and you say, where's the talent? You look at the business as a whole and you say, where's the talent? And I'm sorry again, just because guys can do flips and kicks doesn't mean that they have fucking talent. That means that any old jabroni gymnast jackass can be brought in and become a big superstar in the WWE. No, it doesn't fucking work that way. You just look at it. Again, you go back to the Hogan era where guys like JYD and Jake the Snake were in the mid-card. They'd be clearly top guys in today's WWE. What about Jake? I don't know about JYD. Uh, we know why that would be. But they would be the megastars, at least, in spite of what the WWE would try to do with them. But you're trying to tell me now that a Roman Reigns or a Dolph Ziggler or a Bray Wyatt or a Seth Rollins or a Dean Ambrose measures up to those guys in any fucking way? There is a clear lack of talent, not just size, in the business. But what has also happened to correlate with that lack of size and that lack of talent is a lack of many things on the WWE's end. A lack of focusing on anything other than the in-ring components. They've gotten very lazy. For those people that say WWE didn't focus on, focus on wrestling, bullshit. They focus on the in-ring components too much. They don't focus on developing unique characters. That lack of character development, in particular unique characters, has tremendously hurt the WWE and has really affected their ability to make stars out of these guys that lack size and, frankly, in some cases, lack the talent to become big-time guys. The machine could compensate for some of those things. And make those guys into big megastars. But when you're not focusing on developing those characters, and you're in particular not focused on delivering compelling storytelling, which could compensate for so many things, when you factor everything else in, it's easy to see why the WWE lacks in superstars and why, frankly, they don't have any of them. And if you do think they have any of them, the only one you can really argue for is the guy that wrestles part-time in Brock fucking Lesnar. So here are some tough-to-take but very simple truths. First and foremost, there are no real superstars in today's WWE. Think about it this way. In the Attitude Era, arguably, in my mind at least, the biggest star of them all was Vincent K. McMahon was the 50-plus-year-old owner of the freaking company. He has more star power and charisma and is roided up right bicep than anybody else on the entire freaking roster today. There's a reason that when Vince McMahon's music hits and so many fans have all this animus and hatred and vitriol and vile feelings towards Vince McMahon, he gets perhaps the biggest pop and the biggest whoa of the entire night because he actually feels like a superstar. He feels like a megastar. Vince McMahon could be a regular character on TV again today and easily steal the spotlight off of anybody and easily, beyond question, be the unanimous top star in the company. That's sad. That's pathetic. The name and brand of the WWE draws, not the names of the talents. Don't sit there and tell me that a bunch of people spend money on tickets to go see Daniel Bryan or went to go see CM Punk or went to go see John Cena or freaking Randy Orton or Triple H. Oh, bullshit! Because if John Cena draws 
like the WWE tries to tell you he draws, and like so many of the WWE sheeple that buy that Cena loving bullshit try to tell you, why has the business declined so much over the past nine to ten years with Cena at the top? And don't give me that merchandise crap. Because John Cena is nothing more than a prop. That's what he is. He's a prop. He's not a money drawer. He's not a superstar. He is a prop. He is a device that allows the WWE to make just enough money to fucking get by. And there's no way you could really compare it against anybody else because nobody else has been given that opportunity to be in that position over the past 10 fucking years. John Cena draws my fucking ass. If he was such a big megastar, why is the business of the WWE not so good? And if Daniel Bryan is really that big of a draw, and so many of you really believe that Daniel Bryan is so tremendously over with the casual and mainstream audience, then why isn't business up? Why aren't the ratings up? Why isn't the WWE doing better with the WWE Network with Daniel Bryan being featured as a top guy? Huh? 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 Well, the simple truth of the matter is, if John Cena is the best you've got, that ain't good. If Daniel Bryan is arguably your top guy in your company today, that means that you don't have any superstars. You don't have any megastars. Is that true? Yes! Yes!